look at capacity planning. When you are doing capacity planning, there are four general steps. The first step is to forecast demand. We need to make sure we forecast demand further enough into the future for whatever we are producing and the decisions that we're making. So typically we're looking at capacity planning as a strategic or a design decision for the company. And so you have a longer forecasting horizon. We need to forecast demand for say one to five years. It could be even longer depending on your industry. For example, if we're looking at a petrochemical company uh, like Dow or Nova, you need to forecast up to 30 years uh, as you are capacity planning because of all the infrastructure that would be involved in building a facility. So first we forecast demand. And then the second step is to take that forecasted demand and turn it into a capacity requirement. So we're going to calculate the capacity requirement that comes with the forecasted demand. And then we're going to measure our current capacity if we're already producing. We need to compare the current capacity to the requirements we have for our capacity based on the forecasted demand. And if those two don't match, we need to decide if and how we are going to deal with the gap. So let's look at an example. So let's look at a hospital example. And so let's start with the data we have here. So here we have the last 10 years and the number of patients that we have treated at our hospital. So our first step is going to be to do some forecasting. So we can take our data and we can insert and we're going to insert a chart and we're going to insert in this case a scatter plot and we want to fit a line of best fit to it. So we're going to insert a trend line and let's go to trend line options. We're going to go with linear but we also want it to display an equation and tell us how well that equation fits. So here we have a formula that it's given us, y equals 454.05x plus 288.6.7 and an r squared of 0.9. r squared is called the coefficient of determination. It tells us the amount of variation in one variable that explains the variation in another variable. So in this case, we are using time to explain the number of patients at our hospital. So about 90% of the change in the number of patients can be explained by the change in time. We see a nice linear trend here. Now we want to use this formula to forecast forward in the future. So let's forecast forward for the next year. So we'll call that year 11 in the life of our hospital. And we want to forecast year 12 as well. In fact, let's go a total of four years into the future. So for our forecast, we want to take that formula of 45405 times the period plus 2886.7. So we've taken that formula that we got from fitting a line and we're just putting in year 11 instead of one of the previous years. We're going to drag that down. So now we can see that the forecast uh, for the number of people needing procedures at our hospital has increased over time. So we're going to remove that graph so that we can continue working and doing our capacity planning now that we have our forecast. So the next step in the process is to take that forecasted demand and turn it into processing time. And from there, for our hospital, we are looking at the number of surgical suites. So let's suppose that the average surgery is half an hour. And so we're forecasting that in the next year, so period 11, we are going to have 7,881.25 surgeries. And each of those surgeries is going to take a half an hour. 
So the processing time then is that forecasted number times the half hour surgery. So we can see that the total amount of surgical time we're going to need in the next year is just under 4,000. And we can drag that down for the next four years. Now we need to know about our surgical suites. Let's assume that our surgical suites run 40 hours a week. So let's write this down here, 40 hours a week, and that they run 52 weeks a year. So the question is, is how many hours can a surgical suite run? So if we take 40 times 52, we see that a single suite in our hospital uh, can do 2,080 hours worth of surgeries in a year. So if we are forecasting that we're going to need just under 4,000 hours of surgeries, how many surgical suites is that? So we'll take the 3,940.625 and divide it by the 2,080. So based on our forecasted demand, we would need two surgical suites, each running 2,080 hours in a year, to meet that demand. So if 7,881 patients, 4,000 hours of surgery time. And we can see as we drag that down that over time, so once we are in year 15, year 14, so if next year's year 11, then year 14 is three years beyond that, we're going to need over two surgical suites. So the question is, could we get by with, with just two surgical suites for our hospital? Well, we need to figure out how much we currently have. So if we go back to our steps, remember the first step in the process was to forecast demand. We did that. And calculate the capacity requirements to meet those needs. We did that. So we're going to need more than two surgical suites by year 14. Let's measure our current capacity. So at our current hospital, we have, let's assume, one surgical suite. And now we have a gap, right? So we're going to need more than two in just a couple years. We currently have one. So we need to figure out what to do about that. Are we going to expand and add another surgical suite? Are we going to find a way to overload? That is, reduce... Uh, maybe the downtime, perhaps the 2,080 hours per year of surgery time per surgical suite allowed for uh, cleanup, sanitation. Are there ways to streamline that so that we could increase our capacity without adding another surgical suite? We also have to look at as we add another surgical suite, if we currently have one, we need essentially two this year, well within three years we're going to need more than that. So if you're going to build and add space at your hospital, how many surgical suites do you add? Do you add just one knowing that within three years we're going to need more than that? Or do you deal with it afterwards? And if we look at a real life example, we can see In this article here about Red Deer, that Red Deer Hospital, they are over capacity. Their number of surgical suites uh, is not sufficient for demand. So there is a gap and they've been told by the province that there is not sufficient money for any additional expansion. So they need to look at is there a way to provide uh, more surgeries more beds the hospital uh, without expanding. So we have to look at how are we going to deal with that gap between how much we can currently produce and what the forecasted demand says we will need to produce.